As I ended our previous episode, some people choosing, quote unquote, uh, not to move beyond their trauma is not really a choice. And this is where a 5D mystic will know this. We don't reclaim our power. We already hold the power. And the power is knowingness. We're all people. But, you know, it's powerful. It's educators who empower us with good trauma-informed. They use their actual titles the right way. Because, you know, a smart person, a person who has a love button, we are always inspired Not one day in my life personally have I appreciated the insults people have for humanity. I'm not stupid, nor is humanity. Yes, I can be frustrated like anybody else, but I would never ever in a million years want to watch a movie, in fact, I don't like them, that want to eliminate that which they want to define as a parasite. And I do quote unquote because we ain't parasites, I'm a human. So it's very insulting for a 5D mystic or 5D educator, somebody who loves that I'm alive and you know what, I want to help the future, I want to be here, I want to, I want to love button people, again, we don't have heartbreak, gut wrench, tsunami stuff, no, we don't have the uncomfortableness with our emotional spectrum, you know what I also know is teenagers grew up and they stayed teenagers because I see a lot of people, they are secure attachment, they didn't have the level of environment that would lead them to have a trauma memory so big that they actually feel off. So when people feel off, they describe it and they usually will know it. If if we're lucky for these individuals, they will find a good trauma-informed therapist at this point and they will know, let me go and get help because inside my body is help, not out there in the world and inside my brain is also help, not out there in the world. So on that note, pseudoscience lady here, but I got plenty of trauma-informed hours and I can lead you to sources for those who truly care about expanding one to your own infinite higher human consciousness potential experience, which is awesome. Enlightenment soul age group is freaking awesome. And having in the body, I mean, a restored embodied self is not a, oh, I'm so lucky. No, I actually had a childhood. I need, do I need to compare with your childhood? Is this what we're doing? So some people don't realize that we learn the right silence because we actually love living, like to be here. No matter how many times I've expanded, because my mind expands, 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 I've moved beyond personally the supernatural, and I still remember that day, because see, let me stop and pause. 5D mystics with love buttons, we don't disconnect from our purusha prakriti. We don't disconnect. Somehow we get lucky, again, call it that if you want, but having a restorative embodied self is our mammalian heritage. Like, there are some therapists, they still use the word spiritual stuff, and They make it into, you know, this uh, equation of like a supernatural. No, it's not that. It's our body structure. All of the neuroscience, all of the biology, everything that I've learned, it's normal human 101. You have an embodied brain. If you integrate it, and that means the skull all the way to the nervous system. The nervous system has only three ways it's going to engage. In fact, trauma is not what happens to you. It's how your body, your nervous system. Our first line of defense is our nervous system, which shoots to your brainstem if it's safe to be you or not. There's the sympathetic, and then there's the dorsal vagal in the parasympathetic, and then we have our ventral vagal in the parasympathetic. There are two branches of the parasympathetic. People are trending all over the place with doing exercises for their ventral vagus nerve yoga. Great portfolio of ventral vagus nerve exercises. How are you treating your neighbor? So I get very passionate when I begin to think of the limitations that people have created because, see, this is where I love people. I love life. So let me calm Kali down with Shiva, it's no thingness, and bring in Krishna Leela, which is me in my ventral vagal state being curious and being an intelligent one who creates wander versus being an idiot who's going to have a tone of, I'm dead sure. No, I don't know everything. However, what I'm trying to get to is the three modalities. If you learned basic, good, trauma-informed stuff and stopped saying, oh, it's not true that the ventral vagal state isn't the only way that you can be in a state of love. I mean, seriously, people want Romeo and Juliet to be the state of love. I can't believe the people who continue as adults to look at love like teenagers. I was a teenager. I'm like, why are you all making so much drama? And it wasn't because I was emotionless. No, I have a very good relationship with my emotions. I can get sad. 
I can get mad. I can get happy. I, six basic emotions. We all have them. Some of us matured them. It's really fun. In fact, that's why Purusha Prakriti is really fun. Prakriti, pure energy. It's not because you're pure in the sense of the middle ages. No, it's because you actually know how to fuel. No, it's really you just here. I don't even know how to explain it because I'm thinking it's so straightforward. I don't get how people don't get here. But thank you to my somatics and trauma-informed experts and Patrick Tihan who reminds me, people who have childhood trauma are disconnected from their emotions. And then I also remember teenagers who chose to go down the stereotype lane. And oh, yes, that's right. When you get anger and that certainty and you're ruminating in your brain and movies do a lot of that, especially with relationships, they make it all into big struggle, which it doesn't have to be. So here's the deal. When you choose love all on your own without any trauma informed 5D mystics, that's my 30 percent love buttons or the ones who got out of the shame button it is possible some people though they need to understand themselves because nobody apparently has an interest in learning how their embodied brain works and doesn't believe that the nervous system has anything to do with their mood swings there's just a lot of different types of people that prefer to be limited no i don't really know again how a person wouldn't be curious about good information when their emotional state and energetic state are low However, let me put that to the side again, because even as a kid, I wondered, why wouldn't you want to learn? Don't you know that you don't know anything and that there's so many different beautiful subject matters? Why is it so hard for you to use your brain? I mean, I have horrible memory retention. Ask me what I read in my books for my master's. I don't remember anything. I'm not able to be a regurgitation is what I'm saying. And that's apparently considered an intelligent intellect somehow. But I get it. I've, I've always appreciated people who can remember data because I remember the gist of something. In fact, my life has been led with a right brain approach and then the left comes in and I get to stay curious. So again, some people, it's not that they choose consciously. It's that the nervous system, if it got used to handling emotional stress, this is why attachment styles, attachment categories, attachment researchers have all to share about it and trauma informed experts and when you bring the two together not contrasting but they contrast so if you have attachment wounds and trauma wounds your relationships are going to be a lot of struggle and the romeo and juliet scenario doesn't make it better so here it is if you are a mindful person and you're 5d you already know this and i am building a group of us to support the people who right now want to get out of their dysfunctional patterns it's dysfunctional because there's a dysregulated nervous system they don't need to have to want to do therapy or not, but if they meet people who are Zen masters, which is where our lovely 5D mystics or educators, the functional adult in the inclined enlightenment soul age group will be, it's because we don't get angry when people are shaming, blaming, faulting, or revenging, and they're weaponizing their words, and they're manipulating, and they're dysregulated, and they're doing things that are not nice to us. While they're in their anger, hurt, ruminating, and there's a lot of energy of people like that right now. The 4D bandwidth, 3D, they're all over the place. They're, every year, there's certain themes. If you're a mystic in any way, shape, or form, and you're actually the owner of your own connectedness, you will know what I'm saying, which is why I plan on integrating lovely readings for my 5D mystics, because 4D, nope. We need everyone because they're specialized in areas and i definitely know i'm not going to be looking into astrology in depth yet but there's a lot to talk about when it comes to these moments and right now is retrograde season so let me when people have the habit of going offline it's because of their own childhood wounds wherever they will have failed in relationship and again wherever they did not have the ability to move into restored embodied self so it's not about educating necessarily people can only resolve their trauma in relationships that last because the attachment system needs to be able to have a consistent contingent communication and the heart and the body needs to be seen as good what you're doing great direct communication which is okay here's no here's no but not with shame not with blame not with anywhere shape or form fault or guilting or the whole spite and stuff like that so we're building a community of people who can grow up want to be grown-ups with their emotions the energy body your nervous system understand it or at the very least be curious about it and then bringing to our relationships conversations of love for real not pretend it's you're a shit i'm a shit but we love each other and are nice and we can move together in a expanded consciousness version 
for us and others create great and important conversations. It's with this tone, not yelling.